So now let us bring all this together. In fact, I could have spent a little more time on that slide because you know, there is some way by which you can connect all those four pictures together. And it's a typical trivia or a quiz question, you know, that, that doesn't get shown in engineering colleges, but we do that in many of the B schools, you know, where, you know, they're exposed to some of these concepts. But having said that, I thought, I you know, I'll introduce this concept to you and then link that concept to what actually happens in interviews. So this is nothing but, um, you are right, this is um, uh, Hollywood, Universal Studios, and uh, there is an elevator. And the story is, there is a story behind this. Uh, 118 is actually the number of seconds, okay? So it is not number of floors. So uh, this is, I mean, this picture is probably about 100 or 150 years old. And those days, the elevator would take about two minutes to go from ground floor to, say, the second floor or third floor. And this is a time when the script writer, you know script writers, right, for the movies. This is a time the script writer will get to interact with the actors to tell them what they should go and tell and act when they go to the set. So that is the only time they get, because the actors will keep going up and down. The actors will go up to their makeup room, and they will come down the elevator. And this script writer will run behind them and say, sir, you know, this is a dialogue that you have to do. So the time that they get in the elevator, which is about two minutes, is what they will get to tell this actor saying that, you know, in the set, these are the four dialogues that you should, that you should tell. And how effective they tell will pretty much determine how effectively the actor conveys the same in the set when they actually do and do the acting. So that is where the concept of, can you tell me what it is? What is this pitch called? Persuasive communication is correct, but there is a very, very, very powerful, um, I won't say acronym, but phrase that is used to explain that. It happens in the elevator. It happens for two minutes. And it is very impactful. What is it called? Huh? On the stage? Yeah, anybody from the stage? Alvelo? <laughs> Sorry? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Salamelo, <laughs> you get a prize. So this is this concept is called elevator pitch, and I'll tell you why, and I'll explain elevator pitch. So go to the next slide. Okay. So this is that two-minute syndrome that you have to do. So what? There are four or five steps that actually the scriptwriter, you know, practices, you know, so that he makes sure he or she makes sure that the right message is conveyed to the actor. So the first eight seconds is when they actually introduce themselves, saying that they don't introduce themselves, but they say over the next, and, and I'm trying to convey it, convert it to a natural business uh, interaction that actually happens. So if you convert what this actor tried to do to a typical business scenario that a salesperson will do when he goes and meets a prospective client is what you see in that slide. So what do you do? If you are a good salesperson, what will you do? You go, assume that, uh, you know, you are getting into, this, into, into the elevator along with a prospective client, okay? And then you have two minutes before he or she gets out of the elevator. What are the communication that you will do with them is what is going to make the sales very effective. So there are five steps and not necessarily in some order, but, you know, typically accepted as a typical convention. Um, so you say, you go and tell him that over the next one and a half minutes or, you know, 112 seconds or 110 seconds or two minutes, I will tell you how a particular product that I have will help you improve your bottom line or improve your revenues or improve your profits as it is called by so much percentage. So you are making an immediate connect with the prospective buyer saying that, you know, my product will make sure that your company's profits go up by 25%. Now, the moment the CEO or the business person hears that, 
he is obviously going to look up and say, okay, now tell me more, right? So that is what he will do over the next one and a half minutes in the elevator. So what are the steps he will do? First, he will introduce himself and see the way he introduced himself in that slide. He says, he is a, I, over the last 15 years, I lived my passion to build effective social media platforms that do a few things, right? He is not saying, you know, I am from New York, you know, I live in Los Angeles now. He is not saying that. So he is clearly creating an impact with the businessman saying that he lives a passion for a particular theme that the specific company or the businessman is looking for. And then he introduces his company saying that my company specializes in building social media platforms on a Facebook or on a Twitter um, um, or any other uh, social media platform which will help companies improve their customer satisfaction outcomes. That is the second step he says. So he is introducing himself very differently. He is introducing a specific product or an offering that he has that has maximum linkage with that businessman. And then he goes on to say that, you know, I, by the way, I have looked at your website. I looked at the way your company has performed in the last quarters. And by the way, I have this product which will help you improve your profits or the revenues for the next two quarters by 15% or 20%. So he has already created that connect with the businessman. So what is he saying? He is introducing himself, he is introducing his company, and then he is talking about a specific solution that will help the company. And at the end of the day, you know, these are the three important things. You have to deliver on the promise that you, that you state, right? So you say, you, uh, you say that you know, by, by working with us, we will actually improve your profit or bottom line by so much percentage. And then by the time he has come to the top of the, uh, the floor that he has to reach, they come out of the elevator. He says, now that you have heard me, this is my business card. Please give me an opportunity, sir, for an appointment where I can come and meet you. Okay? So this is a very impactful, effective elevator pitch as it is conventionally heard and spoken about. Okay, now I will try to connect and link it to the interviews that happen in our colleges. If you can go to the next slide. Now, this is something that I have created based on my own experience, okay? So you will not find this in Google. This is my own theory, so it may work, it may not work, but that is for you to see. But at the same time, this is something I have picked up over the many years when I have talked to students and interviewed and selected students. Now, typically I have found that many of us, when we come for colleges to do an interview, the time that we spend is only 15 minutes, right? That is all we get. Why do we get only 15 minutes? Why? Because we have to interview 500 students in one day, right? Srini will know that, you know, Madhu, they all have done it. And they know that, you know, there is a lot of time pressure because, you know, they have to finish all the whole thing by the end of the day, right? So in the 15 minutes, how do you make a very impactful pitch to the interviewer is what is going to make your decision uh, or their decision positive for you or not. And I am drawing a clear parallel between that and an elevator pitch that I spoke about. Only thing is, in an elevator pitch, you have only two minutes, because that's the time the elevator takes, probably, to, to go from floor one to floor 100. But here you get 15 minutes, and in 15 minutes, how do you make that conversation very fruitful for you? <coughs> now, I have divided this entire interview process into three zones. Okay, it is called the zone of assessment and then a very unfortunate zone of rejection and then only, and listen to this very carefully, then only the zone of selection. So what is happening? You are, what is happening first? Are you rejected first or selected first? Huh? Louder. I can't hear. You are rejected first, right? See the very unfortunate thing that happens in our interview. You are rejected first and then only selected. It is like, you know, guilty till proved innocent, right? And that is, and why are we in that situation? Why are you in a situation where you are rejected first and then selected? Because 
there are too many, it's a, it's a supply demand gap, right? There are more students than jobs available. So our vice chancellor was saying at the beginning that only 25% are employable, right? So what happens to the 75%? They are the ones who go through out of that first six minutes, seven minutes that I'm talking about. They go out of the window during that time. They're all thrown out at that time. And they are thrown out not because they are not capable, but because they didn't do that seven minutes properly. <coughs> so you study that four years here, engineering, electrical, mechanical, civil, everything, but you are thrown out in six minutes flat. Why? Because in the zone of assessment, what does he do in the zone of assessment? He sees how you walk into the room, how well you are dressed, how well you are groomed, how are you carrying your papers, and how confident you are. And in the first six minutes, now what is the first question typically people will ask you? I, I know many of you have done interviews. What is the first question any interviewer will ask you? Huh? Describe, tell me about yourself. And I want one person here to stand up and tell me, I am asking you this question, tell me about yourself, please tell me what is the answer you will give. Now I, this is a very important question, I want one of you to stand up and give me that answer. Fast. Somebody who is bold, come on. Can you? Or I will make somebody stand and give me the answer. One of the girls out there, come on. Yeah, can you? Tell me about yourself, ma'am. Huh? Yeah, sure. Tell me about yourself. No, no need for a mic. No, I'm, see, don't give me theory, okay? I'm asking you the question. Tell me about yourself. What's your name? Selvam Tainmuri. Selvam? Tainmuri. Ah, Selvam Tainit, please tell me about yourself. Yeah, I'm Selvam Tainmuri from Raj Lakshmi Engineering College, pursuing uh, BECE. Uh, to tell about myself, I'm the student coordinator and the cultural coordinator. And apart from that, to talk about my academics, I have a good CGPA score. And I'm currently working on a project with a Wipro. And it's under a process. And Excellent, guys. Please give a r big round of applause to her. <laughs> Excellent answer. <coughs> you know what a timid fellow like me would have answered during my college days? Tell me about yourself. I will say, sir, I come from, I come from Paimbatur, sir. I am, father is retired, sir. My mother is a ho housewife. I have two brothers and three sisters. The elder one is married and is, he is in East in Andhra Pradesh. The younger one is studying in 10th standard. Is it not the answer most of us give? Yes or no? I am not joking. It, is, it sounds like a joke, but is this not the answer that we give? And I can tell you that is exactly what a TCS will not want to hear. Not because they don't want to know, but they will ask you if they want you to know. But what they want to know is what our madam answered now. They want to know what is it that you bring to the table. You remember the previous slide on the elevator pitch? 